Hello, Somalia's Islamic court says it's now at war with Ethiopia. The courts have accused Ethiopia of shelling positions in courts held territory. This comes a day after an EU envoy brokered a commitment for new peace talks between the courts and the Somali interim government. On the ground, Somali government troops and Islamic courts militia have clashed for a third day, this time near Dinsu, about 100 kilometers southwest of the government stronghold of Baidoa. Our correspondent in the region, Mohamed Edo, reports. The latest round of fighting comes only a day after both sides committed themselves to peace. European Union Commissioner Louis Michel helped broker an unconditional agreement to return to talks from both sides. But with the fighting gaining momentum, the situation does not provide for much optimism on Michel's initiative. Analysts now doubt whether the two sides in Somalia's conflict are ready for peace. The Islamic Courts Union has vowed not to stop the fighting until they drive alleged Ethiopian forces in Somalia out of the country. We are not going to stop the war. We did not start it. It is the Ethiopian forces who started it. We would like to assure the people of Somalia that this is not a battle between Somalis. It is a war between us and Ethiopia. We shall not end the fighting till we get the Ethiopians out of our country. On the streets of Mogadishu, it's business as usual for most people. The city is teeming with supporters of the Islamic Courts movement, and hundreds of young men have volunteered to fight alongside the forces. But public opinion is divided on the war. Ahmed Jamale here says the fighting between the Islamic Courts and Somalia government, backed by Ethiopia, is inevitable. He says Ethiopia chose war with Somalis when it sent its troops into Somalia. For others like Amina Haji Elmi, this war could have easily been avoided. I hope they realize the problems they are causing Somalis and stop the war. The people of Somalia have faced many problems in the past 16 years of war. They have also been ravaged by famine, disease, droughts and floods. I wish they could stop the fighting. Humanitarian agencies are warning that an all-out war in Somalia would have disastrous consequences. Floods have already forced nearly a half a million people from their homes. Now, aid agencies say another 400,000 people could be affected by the fighting. They say refugees are streaming towards the border with Kenya and are asking for $30 million to help. Mohamed Ado Al Jazeera, Mogadishu. And we hope to be able to join our correspondent in Mogadishu a little later in the program. Now, there are fears that any advance by Somalia's Islamic Courts Union will aggravate an old border dispute with Ethiopia. Many Somalis have moved to Ethiopia because of war in their homeland. But now there's concern that the new unrest in Somalia will stir up an old territorial argument between the two countries. Kalei Maestri now explains. 37-year-old Ardo Adam is a Somali refugee. She and her family fled their homeland to escape the fighting. They've been living in the Ethiopian capital for five years. Life here is tough, but one that's not disrupted by conflict. In recent days, Ado has once again been worrying about the threat of war. She tells me she doesn't understand the politics, but she's very concerned about her family, who live in a small town on the Somali-Ethiopian border. There may be political differences between the Ethiopian government and the Islamic courts, but here on the ground things are very different. This is St. Michael's, better known as Little Mogadishu, where Somali refugees have been living alongside the Ethiopians for years. But Ethiopians and Somalis haven't always lived happily side by side. Theirs has often been a relationship based on distrust. At the center of the tension is ownership of Ogaden, which Ethiopia received from the British in 1954. Somalia says it's the rightful owner. Now there are fears that the strengthening of the Islamic court in Somalia will encourage separatists in Ogaden, prompting Ethiopia to lend its support to the Somali transitional government, even helping train its army. And while the Islamic courts want Ethiopian troops out, Ethiopia claims it has no troops on the ground, just military advisers. An agreement on cessation of hostilities would give um, the sub-region time and space for looking at other options. Uh, and maybe the, the, Isla the Islamists will temper their attitude. War and conflict aren't new to this region. Each side is aware of the devastation it brings. And while it's hoped fresh violence can be avoided, both sides remain on high alert, armed and standing their ground. 
Kaleme Street, Al Jazeera, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Well, let's get more on the ongoing fighting in Somalia and join our correspondent there, Mohamed Addo. He's live in Mogadishu. Mohamed, the fighting continues despite the peace talks. Any chance of Ethiopian troops actually leaving? Because that seems to be the main sticking point. No, we don't see any plans at the moment, Darren. Um, Ethiopian troops have said they have all the right to support the government. And uh, the Ethiopian government has often maintained that it will get into Somalia with its troops to help the Somali government in case of any imminent attack from the uh, Islamic Court Union. And now with fighting around Baidoa, there is no talk of Ethiopian forces leaving Somalia anytime soon. Uh, the Islamic Court say the country is now at war, but what's the government been saying there, Mohammed? Well, the government is also saying that it is fighting an all-out war with the Islamic Court. They are blaming the Islamic Court Union for attacking their bases, and they have also been claiming huge victories. Um, both sides have also been claiming huge victories. Just a little while ago, the Islamic Court Union senior leadership held a press conference here in Mogadishu and they claimed to have killed more than 200 fighters from the Somali government side. Uh, most of them, uh, they are saying, are Ethiopians. They say they have also napped uh, about four Ethiopian armored vehicles and they say on their side about uh, 20 of their fighters have died and uh, up to 60 of their fighters have also been injured. There is no independent confirmation for these figures up until now. And where does all of this fighting leave the peace talks? Because the signs look discouraging, don't they? Indeed they do. Um, the peace talks uh, that had earlier on collapsed uh, in Khartoum, there were hopes that they would be revived with the peace mission by the EU envoy Louis Michel yesterday after the two groups agreed to come back to talks unconditionally. And now with the fighting continuing, there is little hope that the two sides might agree. The Islamic courts are saying and have been saying that this war is, has, has begun and there is no stopping, uh, uh, they are not going to stop it. And this has also raised uh, huge fears on the side of the humanitarian uh, community. The UN had just released a press release saying that this ongoing fighting is affecting the humanitarian aid being taken to the people. The UN humanitarian coordinator for Somalia, Elie Laroche, says that thousands of people who need food aid and all kinds of uh, medical supplies after they were declared homeless by the, by the floods that hit the country cannot now be assisted because of the ongoing fighting. All right, Mohamed Adal, live there in Mogadishu. Thank you very much indeed.